Welcome everyone. The topic for discussion is core HR functions, a comparative and an international perspective is what we will be discussing. We will understand the following paradigm with respect to our national boundaries and then international perspective thereby. So we need to def define it. The objectives should be very much clar clarified and the challenges that we are facing thereof. We will be talking about the convergence and the divergence theories of employment relations. You, you know, my, remember there might be certain principles, certain facts where which converge or which comes to our state statement of understanding, and then there are certain point of view which, which you cannot match. The convergence and the divergence theories will be impacted upon it. The VOC concepts of varieties of capitalism as a case. Uh, we'll uh, study this approaches, the pros and cons to this approaches. We'll talk about the globalization, the impact of convergence, divergence theories, the limitations, if any, and definitely the perspective of transnational employment relations. Herein, we will look into the movement of labor primarily and definitely the impact that it has on the capital things on a transnational actors. We'll talk about uh, international labor's organization, international employers organization, multinational companies and so on and so forth. So before we begin, we need to understand what is employ employment relations. Employment relations can be seen as encompassing the study of all aspects of people of work of people at work remember everything that governs the area convergence governs the fact that you people you might be looking into certain aspects that probably impacts your performance your productivity it is concerned with the relationship between the employers and the employees and probably the interaction that they have at the workplace it is also concerned with the employers and employees representative bodies such as trade unions employees associations and how they interact in the workplace. What are the undercurrents that is there in the relationship? It encompasses both industry relation and human resource management. Industrial relations and human resource management. So traditionally, we always depend on our formalities and informal institution of job regulation. Now we are talking about a contract, an appointment letter, whatever that transpired between an employer and an employees. You must have come with the concept of even moonlighting wherein an employee is not only work for its parent organization, perhaps, perhaps he or she is sharing certain of his skills at not at the cost of the employer, his skills, his time, his effort to earn a little bit more of a money to a rival organization. Believe me or not, they are not in a conflict of interest, but probably the employee wants to earn more. And that is what the concept of moonlighting is all about it. Human resource management focuses on the level of individual organization and perhaps is concerned with an issue such as recruitment, selection, pay, performance, and HRD. So I would request you to understand these very terms altogether. In case of the one term that's been introduced in this particular slide, it's moonlighting. If you have still not understand, please Google the word moonlighting as far as an employment is concerned. Might be an issue with an employers, but then it is the modern aspect and eventually will be happening in shorter span of time. The key elements of industrial relationship, what are the what are the uh, parties or the stakeholders out there. We have the employers, we have the employees and their respective association in terms of unions, professional association, government and the state agencies. So you have the administration as one part, we have the employers, you have the employees and their association thereby. The process includes collective bargaining between unions and employers or employers association. Industrial dispute and the dispute resolution mechanism is, is to be in place. We are looking at employee participation at the workplace. What is the outcome which includes, let's say, a collective agreement between employees, their employers and their association, a decisions by tribunal or conciliations committee that resolves a dispute, an agreement between employees and the employer on the issue of a workplace as on and on basis, if you may say so. So what is the international and comparative employment relations? International employment relation is all about being transactional transnationals or foreign transnationals are institution organization of phenomena which crosses 
multiple national boundaries and that is the reason we call them as an mnc as a multinational corporation or international labor movement where there's a movement of talent transfers from one country to another european union <laughs> international labor organization per se these are basically the example mnc ilo and european union wherein foreign is where you are studying and employment relationships system with other countries now comes the comparative employment relation a systematic method of investigating employment relations in two or more countries which is analytical rather than being descriptive you are putting complete understanding of what are the causes and effect thereof to learn about er in different countries to provide insights into our own system of employment relations every time i pronounce er every time you see er on the in your videos you will understand this is all about employment relations to develop the theories and explain of different pattern of employment relations now there are organization which has a six days week sunday being off there are organization which have a five days week both saturdays and sundays are off and then yet the evolving pattern of employment says that you might be working only for four days that means friday saturday sundays are off the point of contention is not this there are countries which follows this system and then there are some islamic countries which follows friday as a off mandatory off day for a week if it is a six days working thursday and friday if it is a five days working and so on for so forth and if it is a four days working it would be thursday fridays and saturday the point of contention so is not the day the point of contention is the world is becoming a global village any up kept any disruption any stoppage of work in any point of the day might affect the supply chain might affect the business proposition thereby so we need to have a uniformity as a case might be to develop theories and explanation thereof to guide policy making by learning a successful employment relationship systems the challenge is thereof as i have mentioned in the in, in the very outright of the agenda we'll speak about the challenge in the com comparative employment relations research there are important differences the meaning the significance of the key employment relations differs across country did i say friday been an off for islamic country saturday sorry sunday has been the off for the rest of the countries across the globe data is collected in different ways example differences in industrial disputes are defined categorized and how their incidence has been recorded as in being it it might be recorded it might be retrieved at a later opportune time what is the validity of our data or the storage of the data per se anything that might have happened in certain countries beyond 90 days should be neglected some countries says beyond 180 days some countries says after one year it becomes irrelevant uh, the the individual so called individual might be into a disciplinary procedure disciplinary action but he or she might have improved per perspective performance or attitude within those span of time so this again depends on and varies from country to country therefore effective comparison require detailed understanding of each national context researchers choose a comparative research design most similar cases two or more countries that are similar in as many respect as possible except for the phenomena under study most different cases <clears throat> two or more countries that differs in almost every respect except the phenomena under examination so we have similar cases and different cases so we need to understand what are the uh, reasons behind it and believe me or not the rationals might be as strong in either way the cases convergence and divergence of the national pattern of employment relationship one of the most enduring debates i have already cited you with fridays and sundays being off mandatory offs where whether national patterns of employment relations are converging becoming more and more similar or perhaps they are diverging becoming more and more different <clears throat> so whether a more complex pattern of convergence and divergence is taking place either way we talk about convergence theory assume that there is a common presentation among the societies to adopt a particular best practice of employment relation how do we go across with it the <clears throat> original convergence thesis were developed by care 
which in 1960s were all about industrialism and industrial man as a person. The logic of industrialism is what? They create pressures across society to adopt a particularly pro-American style of employment relations system. The critic of this argument is technological determinism and probably the American perspective. Door in 1973 suggested convergence maybe towards the Japanese employment relations model rather than the American one. He argued that countries which are industrialized at any particular later stage will be developing employment relations institutions that are suited to industrialization. We talk about divergence or partial convergence theory. Comparative employment research has found that some countries' difference persists out perhaps even increase with the passage of time. But overall, there might be a convergence towards two or more pattern of employment relations. Some aspect of employment relations are converging while others may be diverging. Common trends do not necessarily result in a common outcomes. Absolutely true. We have our own attitude, values, and uh, probably uh, perspective in place. There is an increased variation in employment relations practice within the country as, as it shifts. We are going from uh, five days weeks to four days weeks. We are opting for a six days thing. People, organization, countries are even vouching for a flexible timing of his, uh, of his house. So yes, everything is playing an impact. We are talking about globalization is used to characterize changes. In international economy, it normally refers to a growing interconnectedness of international economy. It is associated with growth in cross-national trades, foreign direct investment, growth in national financial interactions. It is argued that the globalization has created a common set of economic pressure across all market, be it products, be it factors, be it services, which may impact employment relations. Globalizations and what is the relations with an employment relations altogether? We need to have to give it two views altogether. One is a simplistic approach of globalization, and the other one would be the institutional approach of globalization. When the simplistic approach, we talk about economic pressures has been associated with globalization. Either you uh, be a part of the supply chain or you perish. You cannot be a part of the supply chain, so it's better that you become a part of the supply chain. The simplistic globalization approach is all about it. It's a convergence of employment relations policies and practices. That's the race to the bottom of wages, labor, standards, mobile capital seeks lowest call labor cost. Everything well said and done. The capitalistic approach says production should be at the lowest possible cost. So wherever the labor is cheap, probably you will see capital flowing out there and investment going out there. What the, the company wants, it wants to hammer down the cost to the bare minimum. So government lose autonomy in policy making, perhaps can no longer guarantee the labor rights. Instead of legislations to accelerate decentralizations and deregulation of labor market, basically to attract capital investment. On the other hand, it can be an institutional based approach for globalization. Despite common economic pressure associated with globalization, Diversity in the national patterns of employment relations will persist, will exist no matter what you do. Existing employment relation institutions mediate, filter those pressures all together. They will be talking about what to do in different countries. <clears throat> the VOC approach, the VOC is varieties of capital approach, capitalism approach, is the main feature of the approach. Did I say you are going to divert your capital wherever there is a lowest cost producers factors, be it labor, be it resources, be it technology, whatever comes the cheapest way, the capital is going to get attracted. Applying the VOC approach to employment relations, VOC, globalization, convergence, divergence, debate will go on and the limitations thereof. So let us understand the main features of VOC. There are two ideal forms of capitalism. One is the liberal market economies. And next will be coordinated market economies. Each of this form of capitalism includes a set of complementary institutions that forms the basis of the country economic competitiveness. Lead to a good economic outcome. The firm is at the center of their analysis in order to develop, produce, distribute goods and services. Profitability, a firm must effectively coordinate with a wide range of actors, investors, employees, union, state supplies and so on and so forth 
Whereas the main features to a firm must coordinate with other actors in five sphere, industrial relations, vocational training and education, corporate governance, inter-firm relations, relation with its own employees. We are talking about a, a firm coordinating with the five spheres, the industrial relations, the training, the governance, the inter-firm relations and the relation with the employees. The relationships with the actors of these spheres are very problematic and you need to iron out the issues. Firm can resolve coordination problem internally within the firms, within the hierarchy, externally when markets or non-market actors play a major role. Next features that I would love to address is the national institution shaping, how firms resolve their coordination problem. What are the issues that comes in with? In an LME markets, if we were going around it, firm resolve coordination problem through hierarchies, probably market at an arm's length. In CME markets, where we are looking into it, firms resolve coordinated marketplaces every now and then as possible. So both the solutions to coordinated problems from institutional equilibria, which has a comparative advantages. Remember the comparative advantages for LME is all about coordination, whereas the comparative advantage arises from cooperative behaviors among actors results in an information exchange, monitoring and sanctioning of the defection. So let us understand what LME is all about it. The liberal market economies, if I say so, is a classic example being United States, wherein the co corporate governance is an outsider shareholder dominated performance represented by current earnings. Employee relationships are all about short term methods of market relation between employee and employer. Top management has unilateral control over the firm. Industrial relationship, let's say, is all about employers' organization and unions, relatively much weaker. It's almost decentralized wage setting, insecure employment. You have a concept of hiring and firing as on when on basis. Vocational training, educational institutions, vocational um, education is offered on the market. Labor force has to have a generally a high skills, inter-firm relation, market relation, competition, use of formal contracting as the case might be. What about CMAs? When I say CMA, it is all about coordinated market, market economics. This classic example is Germany. So there is uh, corporate governance which is long term bank dominated and inside the system. Probably is a cross directorships. We are looking into it wherein a director of one particular firm is also uh, on the board members of a competitive firm, perhaps on a different firm altogether. There's a cross shareholding. We're talking around it and vice versa. So similarly, the another directors would be a board member of your, your company or another director of a separate company. So this cross shareholding happens, management agencies control through network, reputational monitoring, employee relationship is long term formalized participation of employees, consensus decision making with management, industrial relationships is all about trade unions, employer organized, industry wide collective bargaining, pay determination, we're talking about employment, relative security. We're talking about vocational training, elaborated industry-based training schemes. Labor force has a high industry specificity. We are talking about firm-specific skills as the case might be. Interfirm relationship is development on the co uh, in the collaborative networks. Cooperation among the firms in a diffusion technologies does help all together. This is what we would be actually evolved over a period of time. Institutional complementary is complementary occurs when, when the presence of one institution enhances the returns of another institution. In a way, comparative advantages arises from bundling of complementary institutions. Hence, countries, whether it's liberal market economies or coordinated market economies, if you are looking into it, they are two different clusters. The important departure from comparative industrial relations studies shows that the single feature that is, let's say, collective bargaining structures over an economic performances takes a precedence. The effect of a single institution perhaps may be misleading may arise from constellation of institutional arrangement. But what I wanted to point it out to the audience of this particular video, whether it's a liberal market economies or coordinated market economies, they have their own pluses, they have their own uh, demerits thereby. So you need to understand and everybody's pluses are unique to themselves. They 
these two economies, though they are the capitalist economy, we are looking into it, capitalist system, if you may, if I may say so, uh, are no way inferior to each other's comparative institutional advantages. The institutional framework, either of LME or CME, liberal market economy or quoted market economy, provide nations with comparative advantages in performing certain activities, producing a certain kind of goods and services as the case might be. So this is what we need to go around it. So applying VOC approach, <coughs> what we are looking at the employment relationship, we are talking about varieties of capitalism. Employee concerns are the central features. This is what we are looking into it. We are talking about collective bargaining. We are talking about union members. We are talking about employee association. We are talking not only about this, perhaps personal development in terms of skill, relations with the employees at the workplace. Focus on the institutional complementary. Overcome tendency to treat ER institution in isolation. VOC approach brings the uh, firms and the employers into the center of analysis. Remember, varieties of capitalism is what we are looking for. It the globalization, the convergence, the divergence debate. The VOC approaches places importance on this institution. Different set of institution will mediate, refract the pressures associated with globalization in different ways. Regarding employment relationships in LME, we can expect deregulation. The race to the bottom as outlined in the simple globalized firms as the case might be. In CME, we can expect the firms and the workers to resist deregulation. This result in bifurcated relations in times to come. Now, what are the demerits of uh, varieties of capitalism approach? There are a large literature crit criticizing the VOC approach altogether, but it is not as influential as you want to so, or say so. What we are looking into it's one thing the variety of capitalism says it's not enough variety as such. LME or CME, liberal market economies or quadrant market economies doesn't directionally captures anything of diversity of the market economies. In several, um, you if you look into it, organization for economic and corporate de uh, development countries that comes around it that doesn't fit, ignores the difference within the variety, especially among the coordinated marketed economy, CME. It is static, more or less, it is deterministic, predictive. Comparative two countries at the same point of time. Only two varieties of capitalism are viable. Change to other ca categories impossible, make it difficult to explain and change. Downplay the role of agencies, conflict, power, politics, whatever we want to go around it. Now downplays or ignores the international factors thereby, neglects linkages between nations and states thereby. So what are international industrial relations? Capital and labor are transnational actors. International labor organization, international employers organization, multinational companies and so on and so forth. Transnational regulatory bodies, international labor organization is all about ILO. World Trade Organization is WTO. So we are telling you what are the various industrial relations, the organization, the example, and how do we go around it in terms of capital, in terms of labor. Transnational regulatory bodies, as the case might be. We are talking about the liberal internationalism. Labor is a passive victim of globalization. You agree it or disagree it. This is what is exactly happening. International Labor Confederations, what are we looking into it? We are talking about global confederation. We are talking about ITUC or ICFTU, this International Trade Union Confederation, regional confederation like European Trade Union Confederation, ITUC. Then we have the Global Union Federation, which link together the national unions from a particular trade or industry. So we have those labor internationalism the european work council per se activities of international union organizations not much not very impactful I, I'm, though it's almost uh, uh, indicative in nature so representative of activities at ilo services of member unions especially in less developed and newly industrialized countries information sharing in terms of best practices international campaign as far as the uh, way to go about doing the business or the processes, international framework agreement, IFAs on a minimum labor standard, 
between global unions, federation and multinational companies. We are talking about employers, international dimensions. International organization at employers, IOE, represent employers at the International Labour Organization. We can speak about Business Europe, formerly Unions of Industrial and Employers Confed Confederation of Europe, as you, we, we call it around it. Multinational companies will be the countries of origin. We are talking about home country effect, host country effect, employment relations practices, subsidiaries, current questions about employment relations in multinational companies and so on and so forth. The International Labour Organization, this is one point which we want to emphasize upon it. Way back in approximately a centuries or 103 years back, in 1919, it was associated. This was established in the League of Nations. 1946, it became the first UN agencies that is the International Labour Organization has a unique tripartite structure, government, employers and union represent. These are the three pillars of the tripartite structures for ILO, the government, the federal government of a country, the employers association or the employers and the union thereby. Key contribution is a series of conventions, recommendation which sets international labor standards. Major sources of international labor laws are 181 conventions, approximately 188 recommendations that has been given. Mind you, this recommendation are almost like a guideline one need to follow or might not be mandatory to follow, but these are golden words that should be given due weightage. Important role in technical advice, assistance to less developed countries, and LDC and newly industrial countries, economies as NIE. So what are we looking into it? We are giving an advisory or a consultant role. The ILO dictates, ILO recommendation becomes a golden word for them to implement, whether it is a newly industrial economies or less developed countries as the case might be. Now, criticism is plentiful, if you might say so. One, it is too bureaucratic, it is too procedural, which are resistant to reform. It is very traditional in its outlook, inadequate monitoring and compliances, and policing of convention. Now, basically, this is they come out with uh, advisory, but the implementation becomes a big of an ask. The tripartite tripartite model of governance of ILO is absolutely outdated and important. The governing body of ILO is dominated by advanced industrialized economies. Although LDCs or less developed economies, countries comprises the majority of the members of ILO. It has a lower status and is weaker than many of the international bodies. For example, World Trade Organization or perhaps even World Bank. Proposal and reforms for ILO, the adoption of more innovative and pragmatic approach to the industrial economies. The current campaign for decent work, focus on fewer issues on which it can have a major impact, build stronger linkages with other international bodies. Example, non-government organizations. Place more emphasis on technical assistance to the less de developed economies. Provide greater representation and the third world countries of the government go governing body of ILO as the case might be. Yes, we are talking about World Trade Organization. Again, this was established in 1996, relatively approximately 26 years back. United Nations agencies, yes, aim is to promote FTA or free trade agreements. Provide mechanism for resolution of any dispute with respect to the trades, if there are any. There are there was debate around whether the labor standards should be included in the rules of WTO. As of today, it has not been included. Conclusions. So I would love to conclude that globalization is having a profound influence on the way things have been regulated. Studying internationally comparative employment relationships allows us to develop an understanding of what is the best methods that we can adopt, what is good in us and the employment relationship system. The varieties of capitalism approach is useful framework for studying international comparative employment relations. It allows us to study employment relations with a broader international context. With this, I sign off. Thank you for watching this video.